Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. And in this video tutorial, guys, we are going to be going through question 2.2. Question 2.2 deals with exchange rates, okay? So before we get started with today's video tutorial, guys, please make sure that you have subscribed to the channel. Please make sure that you've clicked on that notification bell so that you get notified every single time I upload a new video tutorial, guys. And also don't forget to give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up because that really goes a long way in helping the channel grow and in helping the channel to reach more learners that want to better their mathematics mouse. So without any further ado, guys, let's get started with today's video tutorial. <music> Right, so in today's video tutorial guys we're going to be going through question 2.2 and question 2.2 guys deals with exchange rates because we're going to be actually using this table question 2.2 the value of a currency fluctuates okay so if something fluctuates it goes up and down it's not fixed it's not sturdy it keeps going up and down on a daily basis based on supply and demand okay Refer to the table below and answer the questions that follow. Let's just quickly analyze this um, table, right? So for you to get one US dollar, okay, this is what it means. One US dollar, you need to basically have 13 rand and 82 cents. For one Canadian dollar, you need 10 rand and 35 cents. For one British pound, you need 18 rand and 06 cents, right? For one euro, you need 15 rand and 73 cents. And for one Australian dollar, you need 9 rand and 82 cents, right? So that is basically what this table is telling us. Let's have a look at the questions. Question 2.2.1, which currency from the table above is the weakest, right? So looking at this table, right, you can already tell which currency is the weakest because the currency that is the weakest is the currency where you need less rands to get its, um, to get the currency, right? So in this case, we can see that the currency that is the weakest here, right, is the Australian dollar. Okay, because to for you to get one Australian dollar, you just need nine rand and eighty two cents, and that is actually the least amount that you need as compared to the other currencies. Okay, so in this case, the Australian dollar is the weakest. Right. Next question. Explain what this would mean to a South African traveling overseas. So what would it mean? It basically means that if you had to basically choose um, which country you want to go to, do you want to go to America? Do you want to go to Canada? Do you want to go to Britain, Europe, Australia, right? It would be the cheapest to go to Australia, right? Than to go to the other countries, okay? So that's basically it. What would it mean? It would basically mean that it would be cheaper to travel to Australia than the other countries because you get more, you'd actually get more dollars um, for your rent. Okay, so we're going to write that down. Right. So how would they, so it would be cheaper to travel to Australia than the other countries because you would get more dollars for your rent. Okay, so that would be the answer. Let's go on to the next question. Question 2.2.2. Mrs. Nkosi receives 1,200 and 1,200 British pound, right? From my aunt in Britain. Okay, so we already know because it's Britain, we already know that we're dealing with the british pound okay so she basically receives 1200 british pounds from her aunt in britain we need to use the table above to calculate the rand value of um 1200 british pounds okay so in this case we want to convert this 1200 british pounds into rands okay guys if you've been following with me in all my video tutorials you know 
When you are doing your conversions, you multiply by what you want, you divide by what you have. That just always makes it easy for you to convert, okay? And you know, you just write your values in fraction form so that you see which units are canceling, okay? And what units you are left with. If you basically can do your conversions in that way, you will never, ever, ever make a mistake. You will never, ever get this question wrong okay so please follow with me right we already know in this case we want to convert the british pound or the brit sorry the british yeah the british pound right to rands okay and we already know this basically means that okay this basically means that one britain one british pound right so that's how you write it is equal to 18 rand and 06 cents. Okay. Okay. That basically means this is question 2.2.2. One British pound is equal to 18 rand and 06 cents. Right. What are we trying to convert? We are trying to convert 1,200 British pounds. Right. Okay. So we can actually even just write that as British pound, right? It's denoted by that, okay? So we want to convert this 1,200 British pound into dollars, right? So this can also be written as just 1,200 divided by 1. You multiply by what you want. We want our units in rand. So we're going to multiply it by 18,006 cents. You divide it by what you have. We already have our units in British pounds, right? So here, what do we notice, right? The pounds and the pounds cancel. You see that? Okay. And you will basically be left in your units in rent. Okay. So guys, always remember, you multiply by what you want. You divide it by what you have. And you need to take into consideration the table that is given to you and how they basically tell you you're supposed to convert if you follow this procedure you will never ever go wrong okay so if you take that 1200 british pounds multiplied by 18 rand and six cents right you will basically get that it is actually 21,672 cents right so the question was basically asking if Omis Tenkosi receives 1,200 from her aunt in Britain, right? That amount, that 1,200 in Rand value is actually equal to 21,672 Rand. Let's go on to the next question. Question 2.2.3. After Mrs. Ngosi exchanged. Oh, it's actually Mrs. Ngosi, not Mr. Ngosi. After Mrs. Ngosi exchanged the money, she was charged 280 cents, okay? And we're told that exchanging money in South Africa consists of, right? So if you basically exchange money, right, you will be charged an administration fee of 125 rand and you'll be charged a commission of 2.5. 28% of the amount exchanged, right? So we need to verify showing all cal calculations whether she was charged the correct amount. So we basically want to verify whether this amount that she was charged of 280 cents, right, was correct, okay? So we basically need to basically calculate that. Right? How much did she exchange, okay? Remember, she exchanged that 1,200 British pounds into rands, okay? So in this case, we want to take that 20, um, 21,672 that we obtained, right? And we're going to multiply by 2.28% because we are basically told that, right? The commission that is charged is 2.2%. 8% of the amount exchanged, right? So in other words, right, the commission is equal to 2.28% of the amount exchanged, right? That's how we're going to get the commission. 
right? So we're going to start off by calculating the commission. Once we've basically calculated the, um, the commission that oh, Mrs. Ngosi had to basically pay, we're going to add that commission um, to the administration fee to calculate um, how much she was charged, okay, right? Okay, so we're going to take that 2.28% off. We know when you see off, guys, you multiply by what was the amount that was exchanged. Remember, she exchanged 21,672 rand, right? So if you punch that into your calculator, literally 2.28% uh, multiplied by 21,672, right? You'll get that the commission fee was actually equal to 494 rand point one two one six cents, right? So that's approximately 494 rand point one two cents. That is his, um, the commission that she was charged, right? But however, we want the total amount um, that she was charged, right? So for that amount, we're going to still add the administration fee of, right? Therefore, the total amount charged, right? So the total amount that was charged, we're going to take the admin fee. And the admin fee was 125 rand plus the commission fee. The commission fee was 494 rand and 1, 2 cents. If you punch that into your calculator, you'll find that the total amount that she was charged for obviously now exchanging um, from the British pound to the rand was actually equal to 619 rand point 1, 2 cents. Okay. What is the question asking from us? Verify all calculations whether she was charged the correct amount. Remember, in this case, we are told that she was charged how much? 280 cents, right? So from our calculations that we've just done right now, right, we can basically see that, no, she was not charged the correct amount. Therefore, we can just say no. She was not charged the correct amount. Okay. Last question. Question 2.2.4. Exchange rates fluctuate, right? So they go up and down all the time. List one, list one reason why this happened. Why is it that the exchange rates are constantly fluctuating? Why is it that the exchange rates are constantly going up and down and up and down? They're not fixed, right? Why is that? Okay. So if you're a person that watches the news, there are numerous reasons that you can basically give in this um, as your answer. Okay. Firstly, guys, we know that your exchange rates fluctuate because of the rising petrol prices. Okay. That affects your exchange rate another thing that also affects your, your exchange rate is inflation okay that also affects your exchange rates right what else affects your exchange rates unstable conditions in a country's economy right so whichever one that you choose to use um for your reason um from the ones that i've just mentioned here they're absolutely correct okay inflation okay or you can say petrol prices, rising petrol prices, okay? And so on and so forth, right? All right, and that is basically it. I think this one was nice and easy. Um, I th I, at least now I can actually refer people to a video where I just deal with exchange rates because I think this one was nice and sweet, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope you guys followed with me in terms of how you were supposed to um, analyze this um, question, right? So guys, I'll see you on my next video tutorial. That is it guys, and I'll see you guys on my next upload, Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. Bye, guys.